Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're talking about 10 preparedness items that I try to buy every month. Hey everybody, welcome back. So over the many years that I've been preparing, I find there, there are some things that I buy every month. Sometimes the budget is tight, I may not buy all of the things, but I still try to at least get one thing every month. And it's kind of a good rule that you can do this, like you can put a little extra thing on your shopping list that might say, you know, prep item, you know, prep item water, prep item food. And if you do that every time you go shopping, you'll end up buying every single one of these items every time you go shop every month. Now, with inflation, stuff out of stock, shortages becoming the norm, I buy where possible. I like to buy the things that I use most. These are common preparedness items that, you know, I find that it's easy to forget about, but you want to put them away anyway. Things like soap. Yeah, who'd think about buying bar or uh, bar or uh, dish soap, you know? That's something you forget about. That's something you may not remember to put away. And that's something on my list. So, with the possibility of coming lockdowns in the near future, may or may not happen, don't know, but there are some things that you'd be stocking up every time you go to the store, even if it's just one thing per trip. If there's another lockdown, I think you'll see runs on food and items like you've never seen before because people will think it's going to be longer or worse or maybe never end, and that is the main reason why we prep, to avoid those kind of things. So let's get into the first item. All right, the first thing that I try to buy every time I go to the store are matches or lighters. I do like lighters. They are convenient, but sometimes a good match, if you find a deal on these stormproof matches, really helps you out. Even a couple boxes of these plain old weatherproof matches, um, if you can pick them up for free from places you go, hey, more power to you. But I always try to pick up something, something that I can light a stove, a candle, whatever, during an emergency, and that's why I stock up on that. Next item, soaps. Any kind of soap you can get. Bar soap, body wash, dish soap, whatever, laundry detergent, even this stuff here, the Spoka detergent. It's cheap. You can stock it deep. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, I believe these run about $4 or something, whereas a jug of laundry detergent will cost you a whole lot more. It's easy to stock up on. You can at least buy two or three things of soap every month. These are a dollar. These uh, Dawn dish soaps, they're a dollar. Um, something like this. This is just cheap, generic. I bought it at the dollar store for a buck. Um, Book of Eli was why I ended up buying that. I think that was the movie where they were fighting and talking about the last thing of uh, shampoo. <laughs> I started stocking up on shampoo after that. So that's definitely something you want to try and buy up every time you go shopping, or at least two or three of them every month. Staying clean is a good thing after a disaster. Toilet paper. I think we can all agree you don't have to buy cases of this stuff, but stocking up maybe one pack per trip, definitely a good idea. We saw how that was the first thing that disappeared. And while we may already be prepared with it, it's just a good idea to have a little extra just in case there's a shortage of it for an extended period of time. Um, I wouldn't say that if you're a new prepper and have absolutely no food, water, or anything else stored that you should go out and stock up on toilet paper. Take care of that stuff first. But for us preppers that have been doing this a while, toilet paper is definitely important. Also, if you have females in your house, feminine hygiene products. Don't forget those. Let's move on. Batteries. You can never have too many. Store them. Rotate them as needed. A lot of these now have 10-year shelf lives. Um, you can see on the new Duracells, they have 10-year shelf lives on them. So definitely stock up on batteries. Make sure you're buying batteries for what you use and what you need. Um, I have very few devices that take D-cell batteries, so I don't stock a ton of them. You know, I stock a good couple of packs, long packs of them, and that's it. I don't need a ton of them anymore because D-cell batteries aren't in use as much anymore. But my double A's, I stock them heavily. So batteries are definitely important and easy to stock up on. You can toss a pack of that in your shopping cart when you go shopping and you've done your thing for the month. Whether you need bows and arrows, ammo for firearms, whatever, ammo is always a good idea to stock up on a little bit every month. Good idea. You might not draw too much attention to yourself. I understand it's hard to come by these days, but it's definitely something to look for and stock up on. First aid. Definitely important item to keep stocked up on and very easy to do. If you use these Advils, you can toss one of those in for $4 every time you're shopping and you hardly even notice it. Um, if you don't have a first aid kit, I would say buy one, but buy an advanced one. This is a pretty basic unit. It's not going to give you as much as you might need for a real emergency. Buy a little bit more of an advanced unit and then add stuff that you use to it. And then when you feel confident, add other things like tourniquets and stuff when you know how to use them after the fact. But definitely first aid items, especially items you use every day. If you know you're going to take a Tylenol every day, 
Make sure you have four or five of those put away. Last time we had a run on the stores, first aid stuff, over-the-counter stuff, was very, very hard to come by. Also, don't forget things like toothbrushes, toothpaste, and if you rely, if your life depends on prescription medication, speak with your doctor, see if you can get a 90-day supply, and slowly put back some. I know some doctors, when it comes to stuff like heart medication or cholesterol stuff or whatever, they will give you like a six-month supply if you really want. Go to the store, pick it up, put it away. It's a good idea to have it ahead of time. Don't think, well, I've got six refills. I can get it whenever I need it and then end up going to the store when they're out of it six months from now. Make sure you get it. What you have in hand is all you may have in the event of an emergency or a run on the stores or a disaster. Next up is going to be food that will store well. Salt, rice, beans, honey, spices especially, and regular canned goods, even though I don't have any regular canned goods out here, I do store them. I just didn't bring any out for the video. Um, that's perfectly sufficient. Uh, I'm showing you freeze-dried stuff here that's a little more expensive, but if all you can afford is to go to the store and buy an extra can of canned chicken every month, guess what? You're doing better than most people. So make sure you put away some kind of canned goods. Also, too, um, lately we've been putting away the freeze-dried wholesaler stuff. My link down below will save you 15% if you're interested in getting started on that. You click the link and it's an automatic 15% off. But anything you can store. I mean, this yellow rice comes from the dollar store. This stuff is awesome. You know, yeah, you should probably buy... 50 pounds of rice, put it in a five-gallon bucket with oxygen absorbers in a Mylar bag, but for short term, that stuff's really, really good. So it's a definite good idea to put stuff away and also learn how to cook the stuff. I know there's a lot of people, especially in today's world where we're really, really busy and we really don't have time, that don't cook often. They really don't know how to put stuff together. You can put me in a room with a can of chicken, a can of rice, and a little bit of beans or something, and I can put together a meal with whatever I can find. So that's an important skill to have. Now, that probably comes from me working in restaurants for years, years ago, but it's definitely an important skill to have. Learn how to put together meals, learn how to cook, and every month make sure you're picking up something, be it freeze-dried meal or whatever, food-wise. As you can see by the bags in front of you, seeds are very important. I usually stuff them in these kind of bags to store them so they don't spill all over the place, but definitely pick up seeds. You might not be able to find these year-round, and you really do want the non-hybrid ones. But as soon as they come in the store, start buying them. I look for seeds that will actually produce food like squash, beans, peas, carrots. I'm not a big fan of buying flowers. During the winter, I buy the packages of heirloom seeds already packaged in mylar and oxygen absorbers. If I have a garden already, but if you don't have a garden already, please get started. Learn how to grow stuff. Gardening is a skill you can't be without. Even if it's just a bunch of containers you put outside your apartment, whatever, learn how to start growing stuff and see what grows well in your area. So if you need to grow it for emergencies, you're already, you know it's going to grow, you know what's going to work, and you know how to do it. So let's move on. Water. Make sure you're picking up water. And that doesn't mean buy a 24-pack of the individual canned bottles. Um, stuff like buying these things here. Uh, this is a two-gallon one. I have many five-gallon ones. Start putting away water if you can afford it. Buy a 55-gallon drum and fill it up with water and a little bit of bleach. You know, a quarter cup of bleach and 55 gallons of water gives you water storage good for at least 10 years. Um, I've dumped my barrels. I dumped one recently that was probably 15 years old. And it was perfectly drinkable, absolutely fine, nothing in it. So make sure you get some water stocked up. It's important as life itself. Um, you cannot live long without fluids, and that doesn't mean buying sodas or coffees. Stock water up, and you can do that almost every trip you go to the store. Even if you have to buy a 24-pack of water or a 12-pack you know, of extra water, whatever, make sure you're putting away water. Water is very, very important depending on your area. Like for my area out here in the desert, it's super important. It should be something you're getting every time you shop. Lastly, this is something I think a lot of people underestimate because we have the internet and we get spoiled by the internet, but reference materials and reading materials. First of all, good old books. Just books to read for entertainment. You may be sitting around for a long period of time and be bored. At least reading keeps your mind busy. Me personally, I stock a lot of reference manuals and electronics repair and military manuals because I find that stuff fascinating and interesting and that's what I like to read. Um, and I'm learning as I'm doing it too. Uh, for me, reading nonfiction or fiction books would be kind of boring, but for me, reading a manual on how to repair a radio would be really interesting and possibly something I'd really need as a skill. So, reference materials, I still look up a ton of stuff online, and when you find a good article online, it might be a good idea to print it out. We don't know if today's internet's going to be available during some kind of 
disaster, emergency, shutdown, lockdown, whatever, and it may be highly censored. When you find a good article, print it out, get yourself a three-ring binder, get a hole punch, and put it away and start building a reference manual and library for yourself. But books on how to survive, and this one here is really, really good, Making the Best of Basics. I believe I have that in my Amazon store. Uh, definitely, definitely handy stuff to buy. So, let's finish up. So, as you can see, it doesn't cost a fortune to do this. I mean, you know, I, sh I know I showed you uh, freeze-dried food, but if you're going to the store and buying a couple extra cans of Chef Boyardee ravioli, a couple extra cans of chicken, whatever, and remember, we're not worried about nutritional value during a disaster. We're worried about survival. So if you're doing those kind of things, if you're buying extra soap, if you're buying extra toilet paper, maybe some ammo, maybe some batteries, every time you go to the store, you're not going to be in that mad crush and rush when people hit the stores and clean them out. And it's just a good idea in general preparedness, not even preparing for lockdowns or anything we've just recently experienced. This is just a good idea for general preparedness to get yourself up to par and up to speed with the stuff that you might need. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out our Amazon affiliate store down below. Our freeze-dried wholesalers link, like I said, if you click that link, you're going to save 15% on anything on the site. He has a ton of new stuff up there. There's even free dried freeze-dried brisket that will be back in stock soon. So definitely check them out. Also, my Patriot Supply link, that is a good way to get stocked up all at once if you really want to. We have some really good deals on the two- and four-week uh, package, uh, some awesome deals on a monthly package. And that's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. Get yourself stocked up ahead of time. And if you'd like to bring your food in automatically every month, you can become a regular delivery customer on our Thrive Life link down below. You don't need to join anything. You can buy one can of it and try it out if you like it. However, you will save money as a delivery customer or as a consultant. So check them out too down below. And I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.